AI in, uh, in the spotlight, this time uh, facing backlash from Taylor Swift fans from all, all over the world. AI generated explicit images of the stars circulated uh, sometime last month. The controversy has renewed calls to regulate the AI generated content, especially when it comes to safeguarding protections for women and young girls. Isabella Diaz has more. So called Swifties are in an uproar over new images of the Grammy Award winning artist, Taylor Swift. But they aren't images taken by paparazzi or even intrusive fans. In fact, the images aren't even real. They were created using AI technology. The images were first posted in January on the social media platform X. The platform responded by suspending accounts that posted the images. X even temporarily blocked its users from searching the pop star's name after the images went viral. But by that time, one image had already been viewed 47 million times. And the images continue to circulate on social media websites like Instagram and Facebook, despite efforts to have them removed. Entertainment news site Page Six quotes sources saying, the pop star is considering legal action, but against two, and how successful those efforts would be is unclear. Deep fakes of celebrities are nothing new. Last year, shockingly realistic but fake, AI generated photos of former US President Donald Trump Russian President Vladimir Putin and even Pope Francis went viral online. And just last month, the estate of the late comedian George Carlin sued a media production company over a deep fake stand-up special that used AI to generate a facsimile of Carlin's voice. But explicit and pornographic deep fake content is in a league of its own, and there is little regulation regarding the creation or distribution of that material. In the U.S., only 10 states have laws in place prohibiting it, and there's currently no federal law against creating or disseminating AI-generated pornography. But the Taylor Swift incident has already prompted some members of Congress to act. Less than a week after the fake images went viral, a bipartisan group of lawmakers introduced the Defiance Act. If passed, the bill would, quote, hold accountable those who are responsible for the proliferation of non-consensual, sexually explicit, deep fake images and videos. Victims of what the bill calls digital forgery would be able to sue those involved in the creation or distribution of the content. These deep fakes are dangerous. They're traumatic to women. They could cause reputational harm, financial harm, not to, uh, to, to mention the mental anguish that they go through. The White House is taking notice too. While social media companies make their own independent decisions about content management, uh, we believe they have an important role to play in enforcing, enforcing their own rules to prevent the spread of misinformation and non-consensual intimate imagery of real people. This is very alarming and so uh, we're going to uh, do what we can uh, to deal with this issue. This all comes as law enforcement fights a related, disturbing trend, the spread of sexually explicit, AI-generated images of children, with online images being shared not only in the U.S., but the world over. Isabella Diaz, CGTN. And an update regarding the origin of those um, explicit deepfake images of Taylor Swift, a new report being released by Social Media Analytics uh, Graphica found that the deepfakes began with a, a challenge on the website 4chan, uh, for weeks, users attempted to find phrasing that would allow them to bypass the filters on generative AI apps uh, with the goal of creating sexual images of uh, prominent people. Taylor Swift uh, was not the only celebrity targeted in that challenge. Uh, Ariana Grande, uh, Billie Eilish, Emma Watson, uh, among others that were used to create these uh, false sexual and violent deep fakes. For more uh, into this incident and uh, probably many, many more. Uh, where the law stands and what they can do regarding these deep fakes, uh, we're joined by Pooja Nair. She's the partner at Irvin Cohen Jessup. Uh, good to see you again on the show. Thank you for joining us. You know, there are already laws in place that prevent uh, defamation and, and things of that nature, but I think with the advent of AI, it makes it harder and harder to find out who is ultimately, I guess, responsible. Yes, that, that's correct. Uh, and it makes it easier for people, whether they actually generated the content, to use the code or the content and disseminate it with very limited consequences. What are the consequences? Um, let's just say Taylor Swift does follow through with the lawsuit. Um, what would she be suing for? Um, is this criminal? Is it civil? And what type of standing might she have? 
So currently, except for the 10 states, and, and she may be able to sue under California and New York, because those are two of the 10 states that do have uh, state laws that target deep fake content. And those are um, those are civil, not criminal laws. So unlike uh, revenge porn statutes, which um, which 48 states plus Washington DC have, and which do criminalize revenge porn uh, for with for deep fake or generative AI content, uh, there's a limit. There's only those 10 states have uh, laws, and there's no federal infrastructure. So if Taylor Swift were to sue, especially given her um, given given her fame, she could sue for uh, common law defamation, invasion of privacy, and uh, a violation of the right of publicity. And those are all common law uh, common law civil torts, not criminal actions. Uh, the question then would be, who could she sue? Because the it would be the initial user and people who des um, who disseminated that content. And there's um, there's some discovery issues as to being able to track down who those people are. But there's also uh, there's also a difficulty in ascertaining their identities and then suing them and then seeing what the consequences are of dissemination, even in some of the states that do penalize or do create a, uh, a state of, um, do create a civil cause of action for deep fake pornography, most of that challenges the creation rather than the dissemination. Right, so if, if somebody were to create a deep fake of, of us and we were to lose our jobs over it, um, what would your claim for damages ultimately be? That would be defamation. Primarily, it would be defamation and invasion of privacy, and those claims are difficult. It's difficult to um, to prove those claims. It can be very expensive for a normal person to go through the legal process in order to do that, and um, and so I think that makes it really difficult to think about the state civil litigation system as a real effective mechanism for normal people who could be affected by uh, by this kind of incident. Don't we have the power today? Um, if we are discovering websites uh, that disseminate fake content or deep fakes, whatever you want to call it, do we not have the power today in the court system to shut those sites down? It's difficult. It's difficult to do that. And there's um, Section 230 of the Communication Decency Act immunizes online platforms for liability for user-generated content. And although there is a bill that was, um, that there is a bill out there to um, create basically a, um, an exclusion for generative AI content, it's still in the book. So right now, online platforms that permit this content, but have this content, uh, whether or not it's, it's contrary to the terms of use, online platforms that allow um, that, that have users who generate deep fake um, pornographic content are still immunized by Section 230, which is federal law. So that 230 immunization may affect their ability to be prosecuted and to be shut down. And there's also the First Amendment, right? And so uh, having a court issue an order without a federal framework in place to shut down an online platform due to user-generated content is going to be difficult. But if the user generating content is causing harm to individuals, the First Amendment no longer applies. Right, but I think that there's, um, I, I think that there's some tricky legal issues there, and especially with the Section 230 um, uh, immunity, that that should be resolved. That I think that there is some bipartisan will to uh, to resolve those issues because I, I think on both sides of the aisle. Uh, people are seeing that this is a problem and is something that could uh, really proliferate quickly. Uh, but I don't think that the infrastructure is very clear for courts yeah, to take action. My, my concern yeah. is that, um, you know, we're in the beginning of learning what AI can do. We are in the beginning of seeing what AI is doing, and it's already scaring us. We're having this conversation. And I, I'm not sure the lawmakers uh, have the ability to update the laws as quickly as the user-generated content is uh, creating chaos. It's clear to me that they need to update the law, those laws immediately, and, and I'm not even sure what that might mean. What does it mean to you if they were to create protections for those individuals to prevent those from being harmed? 
Yeah, I absolutely think that's right. And I think that some states, like California has created a more comprehensive privacy protection infrastructure. I think that if the Defiance Act gets uh, passed, that would create both a civil right of action and a federal enforcement mechanism. It could be helpful. But you're absolutely right that the law is way behind the AI, techno the AI technology capabilities even now, and that we have... Um, that we're not prioritizing getting rid of the mechanisms of dissemination, even in the laws that are, are pending. I think an important step would be to exclude generative AI from Section 230 immunity, um, because the, the issue here is a lot of these platforms they have terms of use, right? They have terms of use and they will eventually suspend users. But as we saw with the Taylor Swift incident, it took 17 hours for X to take down some of those posts. And it, it, the, there's not really an incentive lined up for social media a website to shut down its own users, even if they violate the terms of use, because they don't have that, uh, because they have that Section 230 immunity right now.